Hello guys and welcome to the channel. Today we'll be having a look at the Asus Wi-Fi 6 router. This is a RT-AX55 model and this is supposed to be the cheapest Wi-Fi 6 router available from the Asus. And today we'll be having a quick look at it and see if it's actually worth buying. If you're planning to upgrade your Wi-Fi in the house for, for the Wi-Fi 6, then you might be interested in checking out this router. As a quick recap for the specs, it has a 1 gigabit WAN port, it has 4 1 gigabit LAN ports, and it also supports AI mesh system technology, which means if you are buying two of these routers, or even if you have any other router from Asus that supports similar technology, you can extend coverage in your house. If you have, for example, two stories or have lots of rooms, and you want to have good coverage in every single room. So this is a pretty interesting candidate if you're looking to switch to Wi-Fi 6. And today we'll be having a quick look at it, test it, and see if it's worth it. So yeah, let's go ahead and unbox it and have a quick look at it, and then go and do some testing. All right, let's go. All right, so today we got Asus RT-AX55 router, and this is a Wi-Fi 6 router, and I think this is one of the cheapest Wi-Fi 6 routers you can get on the market right now. It has incredible speed as a Wi-Fi 6, it, ha it has an AI mesh, so you can use it in a mesh system if you like. It also got a quad-core CPU, which will allow it to process data really quick. And it also has a lifetime free security AI protection. I'm really surprised they have included all this for the price, because usually the Wi-Fi 6 routers are a bit more expensive. So this one's really good, it's got a dual band as well, which gives you 2.4 and 5 GHz frequencies. And it's got four antennas, so I hope this will be enough. So let's go ahead and unpackage this because this reflective plastic is not gonna allow me to make a clear video. While I think this is better, it's gonna be much easier right now to actually shoot the box because it's not gonna reflect as much. So as you can see on the top it says ASUS. Then on the back it tells you all the basic details about this router. As you can see, it shows that it's supposed to be faster up to one and a half times compared to the 802.11 AC standard, which is good if your computer or laptop or smartphone has a Wi-Fi standard of 802.11 AX. This will mean that you're gonna get incredibly fast speed with this router. And another cool feature, it's gonna allow you four times more network capability, which means you're gonna be able to connect many more devices compared to the regular router. And it also works in a mesh system. And having this AI Wi-Fi mesh system, you can actually take two different routers that support this AI mesh system and they're gonna connect to each other and they're gonna be working in a mesh system, which means you can extend the coverage of the signal. For example, if you're gonna be using it in a large house or if you just need to take it outdoors and have Wi-Fi in your yard, this will be great because you don't need to have two exact same routers for this to work. You can just get this router and any other router that has AI mesh system capability. And of course, this is gonna be the Asus router, but it could be a different model. And another cool feature, they got internet protection with auto updates. So yeah, and uh, yeah, and on this side, it tells you that it got a one gigabit one port. It's got four gigabit LAN ports. It's got four antennas, non-detachable. It's got 128 megabyte flash memory and 258 megabyte RAM. Its operating frequency is 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, so it's a dual band. And it supports a variety of different Wi-Fi standards. And the most important one that we're gonna need is gonna be this 802.11ax, which is gonna be 2.4 gigahertz, capable up to 574 megabit per second, and the 5 gigahertz, capable a little bit over 1200 megabit per second. Pretty cool. So yeah, basically this is it. Let's go ahead and open up the box and see how it looks. It's got a whole bunch of different literature here. So you got your app setup instructions here. You can download the Asus router app on your phone so you can control the router from your phone. And it also shows you how to easily set up the router. Then you download the app and then you can set it all up. Another whole bunch of literature you got. You got a VIP member warranty notice. And this is the same thing in Spanish. This is the same thing in Russian. And 
you got a safety notice so yeah this is a whole bunch of different literature documentation that you can look through and then right here it shows you how you can check for the driver and software updates for your router which is good you know sometimes you need to update the router to get the latest feature that they might have just enabled through the software update so yeah just this simple card all right this is our router let's go ahead and pull it out so yeah, this router definitely larger than the one that I have reviewed before. The one that I have reviewed before with the TP-Link C64. If you want to check out the video, you can check it by the link in the upper right corner. And I'm going to leave one in the description as well. But anyway, this is a Wi-Fi 6, so this is a better router. It is also more expensive than the TP-Link one. There are other TP-Link routers that also have Wi-Fi 6. But I find that this is going to be actually the better deal than the TP-Link. That's why I decided to go with the ASUS one. So this is your standard RG45 Ethernet cable. And I'm sure it's going to be capable of 1 gigabit per second. Then of course this is your router. And it feels just a little bit heavier than the TP-Link that I had before. And I really like the design of it too. Like you got these two red stripes in the middle. Looks kind of sporty. It almost looks like a sports car. It's got a pretty glossy finish on the top. So if you touch it, it's probably going to get some fingerprints on it. Yeah, like you see here, it says Wi Fi 6 here. So it is indeed Wi Fi 6. You got a whole bunch of antennas here. Actually, you got four antennas. They're all non detachable, so you're not going to be able to detach them. So if you plan it to transport it anywhere, you might need to be thinking about taking this box with you because you don't want to really break the antennas, otherwise the rotor is going to become useless, right? So let me show you how it looks up the front. So it's got a lot of air vents in the front. It's got air vents on the bottom and it also has two mounting points that you can hand the rotor on the wall if you like to, to save some space. And unfortunately on the sides there are no vents, but they have the same texture as if there would be some vents. I think they have just decided that this processor doesn't need any more airflow. You also have a few LED lights at the front here. You got the 5G LED light at the front, you got the 2.4G LED light, you got the LAN light, you got the internet light, and you got the power light, LED light. And on the back here we get in the WAN port, we get in 4 LAN ports, we got our power inlet, then you have your power button, you have the reset hole and you have the WPS reset as well. So pretty standard router, all the cool features are actually inside that you can set it up and like I said the reason why I decided to go with this router mainly because it has Wi-Fi 6. Alright let's see what else is in the box here. Okay, so you also get in a quick start guide and this is actual paper quick start guide You don't get this very often nowadays mostly because they're trying to save trees So they don't print these start guides anymore Like you used to have back in the day when there were huge manuals included with every with every package and I do understand it because you know many people just don't read through this at all and many of them just go to the internet anyway. But if you don't have internet access before you install the router, this is what you're gonna need. And you also get in the power cable as well. Just regular power supply connector. So yeah, this is it. All right, let's go ahead and connect it, try it out, see how it works. And I'm really excited to see if it's gonna be faster than my other TP-Link router. Let's go ahead and connect it to the computer, set it up and test it. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to do two different tests. One's going to be over the Ethernet cable and another one's going to be over the Wi-Fi. So we can see the difference between two different types of connection. And as always, I'm going to run three tests with each connection type to make sure we get in the most accurate results. I'm going to show you three different runs. I'm going to just speed it up so you don't have to wait for very long. And then I'm just going to put it in the table so you can see the difference and you can see the average speed that we get in over Wi-Fi as well as over LAN connection. I'm going to be using the speedtest.net website so you can also go to this website and check out your actual speed that you have right now and then compare it to the speed that I'm getting. 
Okay, so let's check out the results from the wired connection. As you can see, all the tests are pretty close to each other. The discrepancies are around 10 to 15 megabit per second, which is really close. And the average speed we're getting for the download is 874 megabit per second. And the upload speed is 561 megabit per second. So it is getting close to one gigabit per second for the download, but keep in mind that you will not be able to get one gigabit even if you have the one gigabit connection because there's also some traffic used for the service operations. It always a little bit less. So you get an almost 900 megabit per second solid. And as you can see over the wired connection, the discrepancies are really not that much. They're almost looking exactly the same. And the same situation is on the upload side as well. As you can see, the discrepancies are really minimum. That's why I do recommend keeping the wired connection if you're using your laptop or PC in the same spot and you don't move around. You can just route an Ethernet cable and have a solid connection. Okay, let's have a look at the Wi-Fi results. As you can see, we're still getting pretty good results over the Wi-Fi. We're getting over 500 megabit per second. And on average, after three runs, I'm getting almost 550 megabit per second average for the download and for the upload I'm getting 323 megabit per second. But take a note that the discrepancies are much higher over the Wi-Fi than on the LAN connection because Wi-Fi is not that stable connection and there could be some issues like your signal could be jammed or if there are other devices using the same router then you might be getting different results. And you can clearly see that on the upload on the second run, as you can see, the discrepancy between the first and the third run is like 80 megabit per second. So yeah, this is what you get in with the Wi-Fi, but still the results are pretty good. And let's go ahead and compare it to my other router that I was testing before, the TP-Link Archer C64, and see if it's actually worth buying and worth paying more for this Asus RT AX55 router. All right, let's check it out. So as we can see from the results over the Ethernet connection, we are getting almost identical results from Asus RT AX55 Wi-Fi 6 router and the regular TP-Link C64 Wi-Fi 5 router. So if you're planning to use it over the wired connection, there's gonna be very minimal differences. As you can see, we get an 874 versus 854. Asus versus TP-Link and 561 versus 503. So it is very close results. So there is no need to pay extra for the Wi-Fi 6. But if you plan it to use it over the Wi-Fi, there is gonna be plenty of advantages. First of all, the download speed is gonna be much higher. As you can see from the results, we're getting almost 250 megabyte per second more from Asus RTAX 55 than from the TP-Link C64. The upload speed stays pretty much the same. There is not much difference. And from one run to another, it could change. So you're pretty much getting the same upload speed from the Wi-Fi. But another good advantage of the Wi-Fi 6 is that you can connect many more devices than on the Wi-Fi 5. So if you're planning to connect a lot of different devices, such as smartphone, laptops, fridges, anything that you have that connects to the Wi-Fi, then Wi-Fi 6 would be good because it allows you to connect, I think, up to 200 devices simultaneously. Unlike Wi-Fi 5, it's much less. But anyway, this is the results we're getting from the budget level Asus RT AX55 Wi-Fi 6 router and the budget level router TP-Link C64. As the price, Asus is going to be probably twice the price of the TP-Link ones. So it depends if you're going to need those features such as mesh system capability, have extra devices connected, higher download speed over the Wi-Fi. If these things are important to you, then it's definitely worth spending more money on this router. But if you don't really need those things, then you can check out my other video about the TP-Link Archer C64. And this is another great router. So if you wanna see a full review and unboxing of this router, you can check it by the link in the description. A few other features that are worth mentioning, this router can work in a few different modes. There are five different operation modes for this router. You can use it in a regular wireless router mode. You can use it in an access point mode. You can use it in a repeater mode, in the media bridge mode, and like I said, in AI mesh mode. So this allows you to use this router in different configurations with other routers. And another cool feature, you can enable dual WAN. 
which means you can use one out of four LAN ports as another WAN port if you have two internet providers and you wanna connect them to the same router. As you can see, you can use a primary WAN port and then you can choose one of four different LAN ports as a secondary WAN port. And there are two different modes that you can choose it to work in. The first mode is failover. The failover mode means that if internet from one service provider disappears or there is no internet access, it's gonna start running from the second one which means you're not gonna lose internet at all. Or the second mode is called the load balance, which like it says, optimizes resources and maximizes throughput. This is another cool feature that you might be interested in, just in case you have two service providers and you wanna have like a fail-free internet. One more thing that I really like is called smart control. If you enable smart control, it actually combines two Wi-Fi frequencies into one, and then you let the router decide which Wi-Fi frequency your device will be connected to. For example, if you have a modern phone with a 5G Wi-Fi module inside, it's gonna connect it to the 5G network. If you have like an older phone that only has a 2.4G, then it's gonna connect it to the 2.4. And when you connect to this router, you're not gonna see two different frequencies. So it works really good. And I think it's very convenient when you have less networks available, when you try to connect one and the router just decides the fastest network that you can connect to. There you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you decide to buy one of these routers or if you're looking for something else. I think it's a pretty good deal for the price. It's a Wi-Fi 6 router with mesh technology. As you've seen on the test results, it runs really fast. So you're getting almost one gigabit per second download speed, which is really good. So yeah, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channels so you don't miss other cool videos. And if you have questions, drop them down in the comment section below and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.